Live from Linguini's base of operations, today we will be diving into stop motion, why stop motion struggled to get noticed on YouTube, battle for Brickma possibly in production again, and a quote about suffering. So you're not going to want to miss out. See you on the flip side. You are now listening to Linguini's Dough. Hello, this is Landini, or Landon. Uh, I'm about to discuss why I personally think a lot of stop motion struggle to get noticed on YouTube. I don't I have a whole bunch of facts to back any of this up. I could be inaccurate, so this is an opinion. But... I was really just thinking about this because uh, a stop motion animator named Speak Broccoli, they have excellent animations by the way, uh, he commented, he pinned a comment from mine a year after I have commented it, so there was a huge gap in that year, but it just got me thinking about, because he only has one and a half thousand subs I believe, he definitely deserves more. So that that just got me thinking, and and his videos, because, well, I don't know, I'll save that for the end. Anyways, so I think the first thing is the lack of personality, and I don't mean, like, personality as in, oh, that was fun, like, it, like lots of stop motion show emotion, but the person watching usually can't relate, well, I don't want to say that either, eh, this is kind of where it gets tricky to say. When you're watching someone like Marquez Brownlee or Dave Lee, I don't know if you know them, but they're tech YouTubers. They're, it, it kind of feels like you're talking with them or listening, like having a conversation with them. I feel like with stop motion or just animations in general, it's really hard to get that sort of vibe. Uh, an example, if we go to Vimeo, it has tons of great videos, but it's not as popular because a lot of the times you don't want to just watch a cinematic video. And I feel like a lot of stop motions are cinematic. That doesn't have the relatability. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time explaining this. So, If my personality thing made any sense, I guess. Oh, I know another example. If you compare... Like a cinematic stop motion to maybe the odd zone out or Jaden animations. With those two animation channels, it again it feels like you're talking with the YouTuber. You're having a normal conversation with them, even though you were not. I feel like stop motion just lacks that, and that's our biggest factor on why it doesn't grow super popular. And you'll notice that a lot of stop motions relate to a similar topic just because it helps get views. I know I went to Star Wars because Star Wars was getting me a lot of views even though it wasn't particularly where I wanted to be making content. I still enjoyed making them though. So, Alright, another problem with uh, getting uh, more popular as a stop motion animator on YouTube is it's a lot harder to be consistent. You can't just go, oh, I procrastinated in this video project. Let me make it in a day. Instead, you just have to, it might take weeks, months, videos. You Because you still want quality in your stop motions and you're trying to improve. Because, I mean, that's what you do with anything in life. You just try improving. And with stop motion, it takes a lot of time to improve. Any scene you do is going to take a little or a lot of time. So the consistency, which... YouTube doesn't like not very consistent uploads. It doesn't have to, I would say monthly is probably YouTube's like threshold. I don't know. If you upload every six months, YouTube isn't very fond of promoting your content, even if it's really good. Uh, this next point I'm going to say, I'm looking back at it now. I don't completely agree with it anymore, but. There is lots of competition in good animators, but there's also that in every other thing you'd 
go-to topic in YouTube. There are lots better animators, though. But again, they also aren't as consistent as maybe a less skilled animator. There's that for you. Uh, the audience is a smaller audience than just uh, normal animation. Again, opinion-based. But I uh, personally think the more people who were just watching normal, like Odds Went Out again or Jaden Animations. They ended it up in YouTube Rewind 2018. That means they were able to get to a quite popular level. And that was animation versus stop motion where there's only a couple channels that have hit 1 million. The one I know of for sure is Michael Hickox. And I think there's one more. They have a really inconsistent schedule, but very good animations. So I don't remember their name though. Animation is more popular, which adds another growth stunt to stop motion. Yeah. So most people are looking for stop motions that essentially have already be been done. There's not a whole bunch of... I mean, there is because you got the stop motion, animator, stop motion animators making uh, universes and... Those are pretty cool and stuff, but they usually all relate to something. So it goes, it's kind of like stop motion animators are using the brand Lego, Star Wars, Batman, Marvel, DC, just and any Lego basic term with their, uh, their ideas because those generate more views. I feel like. It would be nice if we could get more variety, but obviously we're a pretty little community as it is, unfortunately. Another thing, I know it's a crazy, another thing, is it in my experience, YouTube doesn't recommend stop motions as often to me. I mean, I don't sit down and watch stop motion after stop motion usually, but I don't get recommended them a whole lot. Aside from maybe like the past day or two, because I found, not, I didn't just find them, but I was watching a couple of their videos. Yeah, uh, stop motion communities aren't that big in general. I went to the subreddit for the stop motion the subreddit, and it had 7.8k members. And the top post of all time had 151 upvotes. And yeah, that's not a large community. Compared to, I think, the videos subreddit just in general, has, well, actually, no, I know the animation subreddit has, it's in the hundred something K followers, and then the just video subreddit in general is in the millions, so that just says, that's an unfortunate part, is stop motion communities just aren't as big. It also gives us less competition, but there are still lots of good animators. All right, well, I just discussed why I think it has growth stunts. Not stunts. Uh, stuff that stops it from growing, really. So I brought up, I have some good points that I think help grow it. The community. Lots of voice actors. Lots of people willing to voice act. Just before I recorded this episode, I voice acted for Toon Bros. So, yeah. The community is great when it comes to that. We all love supporting each other. I, I find it pretty amazing. And like I mentioned earlier, we have multiverses where people make a universe based off those basic terms and it just becomes its own thing. And it's really cool. It's a lot of work for the person that created the universe and the people that help post stuff into the universe. But I think it's really cool. And it helps it grow. And in my experience, most stop motion creators are engaged with their comments, which is something YouTube likes. And yeah, we're just, that's pretty cool about it. Uh, another thing I think that benefits it is most kids at least get one Lego set in their life. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. But they, uh, they, they like seeing their, what they play with come to life. And... Yeah, that's what our animation community shows. We show our stories of how our toys would come to life. And yeah, and it's not just Toy Story. Another animation, still well done, but we're talking about stop motion. All right. Well, I think that's all I got for the 
why I think stop motion isn't growing more popular than it is. So we're going to move on to the quote. Wow, wasn't that interesting to hear. Moving on, we're going to talk about a thought-provoking quote. Sometimes suffering is just suffering. It doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't build character. It only hurts. Kate Jacobs. I gotta say, I was not expecting to read that quote. It's not something I particularly agree with. But I don't completely disagree. The parts where I do agree with this quote is like when we're sick. I I would be much better if I have never gotten sick in my life. Being sick is one of the worst, most annoying, and uh, and obviously one of the most spreadable things. I hate it. Uh, and I, uh, I, w- I was going to put flies and mosquitoes on this list, but fortunately there's some insects that eat them, and the food cycle happens, so could not do that, unfortunately. There really are just small, minor things that are inconvenient, and we would be better off without. And... I don't really have a list of some of these things, but, you know, when they happen, I don't know. But, yeah, there's just some small things that make you suffer, but maybe not suffer is the right term. Oh, when you get overcharged and an item, you're not going to learn anything by being overcharged on an item you buy from the grocery store. Not being able to cancel stuff. Interesting. Okay. So I do disagree with a lot of parts about this quote. Uh, I do disagree with this quote more than I agree with it. Because a lot of the times when you suffer, it does in the end make you a better person. Or you just, you learn how to, you learn a new strategy to overcome something like that. And it helps you in maybe a lot of scenarios that you don't know will happen, etc., etc. Uh, Apple started the trend with removing the headphone jack. Lots of people had to suffer, and we still do. Uh, when I was looking to replace my Moto E4, I saw a lot of phones that were a good price, and I don't have AirPods or whatever, so... Um, I saw a lot of good phones at a decent price, and then they didn't have a headphone jack. And for the most, most people don't care. I kind of cared because I use wired headphones. That, I feel like, made me suffer. But it also did lead to innovation with the AirPods and those types of wireless headphones. Those headphones are actually something I kind of imagined when I was younger. I was like, why don't we just have Bluetooth headphones like that? That'd be so much cooler. And look where we are now. We do. Just the cost of a headphone jack. But, yeah, I feel like us wired people had to suffer, but in the end, it was an improvement. So there's some of my thoughts on this quote. I don't know what I think about it. I'm in between on whether I agree or disagree. Probably more on the disagree side, but you, I don't know. So now to our next segment, where we're going to talk about... Pre-production on Battle for Brickma. To yonder Yida. We are now moving on to our next topic. Battle for Brickma pre-production. I have started it again. Yes, yes, that's what I, that's what I said. Now I got burnt out and all that stuff. Well, uh, I've kind of missed animation. This will probably be my last stop motion series. And then I'm probably going to actually move to more digital animation, 3D, all that stuff. It will take me a while to, to learn. It will be a while for that. So, But, yeah, there wasn't any really... Because I thought I'd be making short films, blah, 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 blah. And I just never did. And yeah, 
That means I guess I like animation more than I thought I did. So I went back to Battle for Brickma on the pre-production. I'm not going very fast at it because I want to not burn out again. I want to keep just going when I need to. Um, yeah, after I stopped working on Battle for Brickma, I got a Switch and... Just, yeah, overall my year, I've played a lot more video games than I probably normally would. And, I mean, it's not a bad thing necessarily, but I would prefer creating something. And I I did want to finish it. I think the script is really good, the idea is really good, and just the name itself, Battle for Brickma. Completely original name. Even if it doesn't get a whole lot of views, I'd be really happy to have all six and the prologue episodes out. So I think I think I am glad I'm doing it. And then I uh, plan on finishing pre-production with storyboarding, voice acting put together, yeah, getting other voice actors' lines, and time framed what animation or what movement to do while I talk. By the end of this school year, so it's, I feel like that's rushed. I feel like it's not rushed. I don't know. I want to start animating in the summer though. So there's that. Some things I noticed working on the pre-production for this project I have not uh, listened to in a very long time is my voice was a lot higher that year. And yeah, that's a first red flag about it. Uh, another thing is, because we only had two voice actors in there, I think I decided I'm going to get more than two. I'm going to cut a lot of our lines out and then get more third-party voice actors. Uh, this would reduce my workload a little bit. Aside, f The hardest part would be getting the voice actors. But I think it's all doable. And then it would also feel more natural not having just the same two voices with different effects talking to each other. Also, I lost a lot of my presets, as in all of them, to the last episode. So there's that for you, too. I might buy Dragon Frame and a dummy battery for my camera when I start animating. Also, to reduce my workflow, and then it would honestly just be easier. I don't really like using the program I currently use to animate, so... Anyways, this is the plan for now. I could change my mind. I could be like, ah, screw Battle for Brickma again. Do 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 do. I hope not. I hope not. Ah, uh, yeah. So I am working on Battle for Brickma again. Take that with a grain of salt. Well, that would be it from me on this podcast today. So, goodbye. All right, before I end this podcast, I'm just going to end with this. If you have any ideas for Linguini's dough, let me know, and I will probably talk about it. Uh, I would love to have some guests on, so if you're interested, just contact me somehow. Uh, I don't have Linguini's dough on other podcasting platforms because it's costly. I don't have the money to do that right now. What is Linguini's dough? This is where I just talk about stuff I care about or just think about and explore new topics and just trying out podcasting. Make 10 episodes, and that's where I'll end a season, take a small break, and then start up season two if I think I enjoyed it. And then the songs to credit are going to be Slug Love 87, Go On Going, Sharana Goes, Digital Memories, and Witness, all from the YouTube library. So that would be it. See you next time. <laughs>